First, London Fashion Week has finally come to a close, but uh, once again, it hasn't passed without criticism of uh, some of the designers who use extremely thin models. Watched by the likes of Samantha Cameron, the luxury label Erdem uh, featured one of the skinniest models around, the Swedish Chloe, Min and I hope this is right, um, as did knitwear designer Mark Fast, who grabbed headlines in the past with his use of plus-size models. However, journalist Liz Jones says uh, fashion designers may insist that they've turned their backs on anorexic chic, but you only have to look at the shows to see that they haven't. But is it time, then, to leave high fashion shows just to produce them any way that they see fit, or how they see fit? Well, you won't believe this, but I actually went to the London Fashion Show on Monday. <laughs> The London Fashion Show, you mean one the, of the shows one in of London the shows, Fashion Week? Yes, London Fashion Week, I can't even say it right. <laughs> and um, I was there purely by chance, didn't know I was going, if you'd have seen well, you the outfit. Well, you turned left, oh, this isn't my No, oh, I thought I was going to a radio studio, didn't know that they were doing it from London Fashion right, Week. So okay. I, I turned up and there was, like, they are so... The, the most startling thing is how tall they are mm -hmm. when you first get there. They are, like, six foot and above. And it was quite... Um, I, it did make me gasp at how skinny some of them right. are. I mean, some of their legs, especially for me, there was a couple of girls walked past and their legs were like thinner than my arms. Honest to God, I'm not exaggerating and really long legs, you know. Mm. Um, and it made me think, so all this size zero thing is, uh, they're just lying about that because they're still using these mm. models. And also I just thought some of them were like six foot, one girl I met was six foot two. Yeah. And she was so skinny that you know size zero on someone that's six foot two is is so shocking to see and <coughs> i'm not suggesting that they now go and use size 16 plus mm. models you know i don't expect them to do that to show off their line of clothes yeah but you know what's wrong with a size eight a size mm. 10 i mean that is a beautiful healthy, figure you yeah. Yeah. look healthy mm. they've got curves yeah. these girls didn't have curves they're, they're, but you know. well, i mean obviously you 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 were there none mm. of us have, have mm. been there uh, this week and, and seen these girls in in person but uh, there are a lot of naturally skinny girls around who who do become models they don't necessarily have eating disorders mm. and they are naturally tall and, and and built that way and um fashion notoriously uses thinner models or slimmer models because their clothes hang better because that's what they say they, they and, and they're better? showing their way i don't think no, they do hang better ridiculous. they don't look good because there's no shape to no, them. I, think it, I think it's ridiculous this mm. is the commercial business they're not artists pr producing things that are going to hang on the wall they're in a com you know they might think they're artists mm. but actually they're in a very very commercial business where they stand or fall by the volume of clothes that they sell yeah. And when you look at most of the big department stores in this country that work with high fashion designers, the average size they sell is 16. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly. way different from yeah, the models yeah. that you have just shown. Erdem, I've worn his clothes. They're fabulous. They're really expensive and they've been worn by Michelle Obama and by Sarah Brown. So what on earth is this guy doing showing these clothes? It's disgusting. Well, but did you not see that their argument, I'm not necessarily saying it's my argument, that, but their argument that what they're doing is putting on a high-end show. They're not necessarily saying that this is how we want our clothes to look on the everyday woman, but we're putting on a show and this is a look that we want to create. That it's, that it's different. But it feels to, to down to the high street there look and young girls will look at those pictures exactly. and they will really mm. have a mm. profound influence. I think it's an unrealistic world that they live in. It's not our world, is it? I don't know who the hell's world it is. I mean, when you look at these clothes, they don't filter down as they stand there to the high street. They changed and, you know, for the people who can wear them, like us. You know, like proper people with proper sized bodies. And I think it's very unfair and I think it's, it frightens me to death when I see that because young girls do aspire to it. Mm. They go, oh, well, you've got to look like that to get a job. Mm. You Not know, and I think that's though, terrifying. If you go to, I mean, that's a high-end fashion show. I mean, London Fashion Week, Milan, New York, what, what have you. They're, they're high-end fashion shows. If you go to, the, there are many other fashion shows that happen throughout the year. Yeah, and they use very healthy looking models. They're, they're your average, I don't know, it's anywhere from size 8 to, to 4. 14, yeah. They're showing a wide range of sizes. Well, and they styles. are starting it's, to. Everyone more. just seems to focus on the, the well, high Andrea, end. Those mm. pictures from London Fashion Week are the image of British fashion, of our a billion-pound industry that's mm -hmm. really valuable to this country, 
those are the images that have now gone round the world as the look we think is desirable. Yeah, and but I think surely it's that's disgusting. to fit in because I mentioned Milan, uh, New York, Paris, what, what have you. Surely I can I can I can appreciate why they would use the same type of models that are used internationally if they if they're fighting within that market. What I'm but saying Jean -Paul is Gautier, that's not representative of all fashion. No, but Jean Paul Gaultier, for example, is a really fantastic designer who's dressed people like Madonna. He used larger women in his last show, and he used women from yeah, a wide yeah. age range, and he's yeah. always Always said fashion is comes from within. But it's what young girls look at. That's sure. the t that's the terrible thing, isn't it? They look at that and think that's what you should look like. Mm. Okay, we'll draw a line under that. It's competition time again. Uh, now today, the government is set to announce an initiative to encourage warring couples set to divorce to consider mediation sessions at up to three hundred pounds an hour prior to heading to court. The new rules, which will come into force in April, have been agreed between ministers and judges, and will see couples who cannot agree on how to divide up their belongings and share responsibility for their children having to attend a mediation awareness session. So what this means is instead of a judge ruling on the details of their divorce they'll be encouraged to hammer out the deal uh, with the help of trained mediators which will in turn cut the government's legal aid bill. Uh, but does it go far enough and do you think that um, compulsory mediation, uh, do you think it would save a lot of heartache as well as the, the, the lawyers fees? I actually, for me, um, it would definitely be about the lawyer's fees. I mean, people gasp then when you said That's £300 right, pounds yeah. an hour. You know, when, when me and Shane got divorced, it cost, I'm not going to say how much, but thousands from me and him. But that's only a couple of letters I mean, by the time actually, they've gone I back mean, and it's forth. Three, you know, our, our divorce was £300 a letter every time they sent you an email, and they send so many, yeah. you know. Mm. Um, and we were very amicable. And in actual fact, the only time the animosity set in was because of these letters the lawyers were sending, which were just so horribly worded mm. that it riled you up and it was like, well, I'm not doing that. How dare he say that about me? So I think in our case, because it was amicable, it would have been great to sit down just with a mediator, just say, OK, you know, I want this, you have that. Mm -hmm. And then it just goes to court and they stamp it. Because the thing is, as well, when you get to court, you don't really get your say as such anyway. And also, when you're getting divorced, you know, fingers crossed, you don't know how to do it. No. You don't know how to get divorced because hopefully you'll have never done it mm -hmm. before. So what you see... The problem with it all is that if it isn't amicable, Mm. I mean, I don't know many couples that get to that edge that are happy enough and content enough to say, well, we'll still be friends, so let's sit in this room. Let's discuss it, shall we? What would you like? What would you like? I don't know many people. I know what I'd be like. Um, he yeah, but that's why you've got the mediator there, because before you can actually go at each other's throats, they will go, well, hold on a minute. Yeah, but what how do you, you, want to how say? Do you what actually do you get in that room but to I start think, with? Why I think it's a good idea is because in industrial disputes, we have something called ACAS, which manages to get people who can't even bear to be in the same room together to eventually, they are at the start of in separate rooms and they work down the corridor and eventually they do manage to sit around a table to get together and hammer out resolutions to some of the most tricky industrial disputes you know in this country if you apply those principles to a divorce it could be a really good thing maybe i need a cast <laughs> you, need <laughs> you need to be in a separate room inching down that corridor for Karen. the next 25 and when years you get finally in the room you need a screen so you can't see each other um, <laughs> But I can see the you sense like that here. screwing up bits of yeah. paper. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does sound a pretty sensible idea because, as Colleen has said, the, the, the huge cost involved in a divorce, when everybody wants to have the final say, mm. will run into thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. Yeah. And lawyers are running up these huge bills mm. because it's in their interest to prolong mm. the misery. Well, they don't they want it to delay. stop, well, do they? they? Kept delaying us. My divorce took about three and a half years from start. You to see, start. I don't understand why would a divorce take three and a half years? Because they kept delaying it, and then if, if he didn't sign the papers on time they'd have oh, to see. put out more papers and then they'd have to find him if he was on the tour and that cost you money mm. you know and it was it was them in so the end we both sat down said actually then? who's making money but here? with this yeah. mediator does that mean that that is it you go in the room you decide and that is the end of it so you don't have all that those letters uh, what yeah. they're saying is that if you can hammer out some kind of deal between the two of you um, then that in that deal in itself can then be taken to the judge and then it's ruled and then on it's ruled so on. and yeah so exactly it, save it saves all, all, the, all the back and forth so it is what, a good idea what do you think of the idea anyway of some kind of mediation because I, I know when when I was going through my divorce uh, we actually went for counseling and for my part it was to help us get to a point where we could understand why we were splitting up 
I know a lot of people see go and see a counsellor maybe to try and stay together, but I think it can be just as useful at certain times uh, for you to reach a place where you realise that this well, is I, why it hasn't worked. I tried with when I, with a disastrous marriage uh, to the younger man I married in the middle of the night in Las Vegas. I thought, well, it's not working. <laughs> it's not working. Right, so I go to a marriage a counsellor to see why it's not working. He went, I went, and then we were supposed to go together to talk it through. And when I rang the doorbell and entered the room, he ran down the corridor and locked himself in the toilet. <laughs> and he said, if that bitch is here, I'm not coming out. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that was it. That was the end of my marriage. And that was sorry the mediator. The language, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Apologies for the language. Well, although I'm sure you've been called far worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK.